Okay, so this was an older kit and it didn't come with the suctioning like your kits come with. These are your kits for that are in your packages. Um, so I'm gonna review what's in this package and we're gonna kind of compare uh, and contrast what is in an older package. So if you're at a facility that has something different, you can be prepared of what else you might need. So again, sterile. We take this off. We can utilize that as our trash, like I've said. So we take our this and maybe keep it out. If the respiratory therapist, somebody's coming for rounds, uh, they can see the drainage. Then on top will be your sterile gloves. You can utilize these only by the cuff, okay? So be very careful with them because if not, we've broken sterility, right? Then your um, drape is going to be there. Remember, drapes, two inch border. Then what's going to happen is you're going to see, again, this is sterile, but you're going to see your suction catheter and then all of your cleaning supplies. Okay, so that's the difference between this one and this older kit. So what you would do is dump it out. Be very careful when you're dumping. You don't want anything to go out of your two inch border as well. So if you say, well, it came over here, it's safe. No, it's not because we've touched that two inch border. So you want it right in the center. So be very careful how you're dropping them. Then you can take hydrogen peroxide, saline, 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 and put your inner cannula. Okay, so as your inner cannula is soaking, now what we wanna do is change over to our sterile gloves and let's do the suctioning, trach suctioning. So remember how we put on our sterile gloves. We can use the cuff, find the thumb, always holding on the cuff. Then we hitchhike our thumb, go underneath. underneath the cuff and then slide them right on hopefully it would be good practice to maybe bring in one more pair of sterile gloves just in case this breaks or doesn't fit okay don't really know what size I think it might say the size check to see on top if it says the size if not bring your own size okay then we're going to get our catheter <coughs> So you're going to have your catheter and just like with our Foley catheter, you're going to want to have your clean hand and your dirty hand. So this is going to attach to oxygen all the way to the wall, okay? Now this is going to be his, his catheter, it has, it has a couple of holes on the side. This is where we say you are not going to press and hold and you don't suction on the way down, only on the way up. Okay. And when we never press and hold, we're always tapping. <clears throat> this is a de very um, ambidextrous type skill. I want you to take this out and practice this, okay? So what we're going to do, thumb up. We're gonna encourage the patient, say, okay, we'll give him his oxygen. <clears throat> All right, here we go. You're going to advance the catheter until you feel a stop or the patient starts to cough. So that should be about right there. We're gonna say, okay, you're doing a great job. All right, and now you're gonna start circling out and hitting. All right, and you always have good control of the catheter. You never wanna go like this. All right, you're doing good, you're doing good. And then swinging out because suction uh, secretions will come out. So always maybe resetting your hand circular motion, resetting your hand so you have good control of that tip of the catheter. Then we want to oxygenate the patient and give him that rescue breath because they have not been breathing and it's very uncomfortable for them, okay? So if we want to redo it, if you felt like there's a lot of secretions, you press and hold and suck up some uh, saline. This will go into the canister on the wall and it will clear out. Then you can go back one more time. 
I wouldn't encourage anything more than three times. It's going to be very uncomfortable for the patient, too much for them to tolerate. So really, if they're coughing, encourage them to cough. If they can get a nebulizer treatment before, encourage that to be done. And let's do some chest PT secretions um, because this is very, um, a lot for the patient. All right, so now we finish this. Um, and we're going to change the dressing, all right? I'm going to take off my gloves and put on another pair of sterile gloves. Wash my hands. <laughs> Sweaty right now. So you're holding the cuff, and then we go under the cuff, hitchhike that thumb, Take the inner cannula and you're going to start scrubbing. Getting, this is if it's reusable, okay? You can dip it back in, scrub. Now, if this is wet, it cannot go back into the patient because of aspiration, okay? So this cannot be, oh, this is nice and clean and have bubbles of water in it, okay? That's not going to work. So with that being said, you're given multiple pipe cleaners, get in there and make sure the tube is nice and dry. Because this is going in a respiratory tract where only oxygen and air is allowed, no water, because we'll have aspiration pneumonia, okay? So then we can replace with a clockwise and you'll feel a clip. And if you need to, then we have, again, I'm trying to keep a clean and dirty hand. You can dip into the saline, not the one that you used for suctioning for the other one. And you can start moving around, throw away. Okay, this here is going to tilt. All right, and it's moving. Another thing with this as well, it will tell you the size on your inner cannula. It says lock and it gives you the arrows, but it also tells you the number. And this is a number four. So if you are getting a replacement one, then you would, um, you would just go and make sure you get a number four, the right one. Any questions, respiratory team is definitely going to be watching this patient. So you can always ask them. All right. This is also, you have another DSD. This could be to clean the inner cannula or clean around the patient's skin. If you're cleaning with this and drying with this, with the inner cannula, make sure that there's no little flyaways. Okay, see how that kind of catches? Sometimes there can be flyaways inside the tube and then that can irritate them when you put it back in, all right? So be careful if you're gonna use that to dry off the patient. Because see, look, just one wipe and it already is pulling. All right, now we're going to do the replacement of your dressing. This opens up like this, and all you wanna do is just tuck it in underneath. I haven't replaced the ties yet because I'm not going to until the very end. And that just slides up. You wanna cover it over just go like that, okay? Now, when you want to do ties, replacing ties, the old kit came with this. This is a foam back of the neck, okay? So it goes back like this and then forward, forward rather. This is wonderful, not usual, okay? Usually all you're getting, and in 
your kit so you guys get this. All right? There's a couple of ways to do this. You can obviously just put this one on and you would tie it and then take the old one off. I would bring a pair of scissors in because if this is if the knot is really tight, you don't want to be pulling on the trach. So just cut it once you've secured your new. Another way to do it, some people have will scoop it around. In half, follow it around and then tie. That works for this patient's neck. It's not gonna work for every patient's neck, okay? Um, so you need to be able to have two finger lengths in between the ties, okay? So even with this patient, it would be a little tight, okay? So I know this is a skill that some of you are going to try to do, and that's fine as long as it fits around the patient's neck with enough um, security and uh, slack, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just do it this way. So I do one, secure my new. And at this point we're done with sterility because we've put our new dressing on, we've, we've uh, done all of that. And again, you're gonna want your face mask on because you're so close to the patient, especially these days, but face mask and goggles would be perfect for this. Because you are very close to the patient. No slip knots here because we don't want it coming off easily. Nice and tight, but make sure you give your slack, okay? And then this is where you would take off, now that they're nice and secure, this is when you would take off your first tie. Okay? And like I said, just bring in a pair of scissors, it'll make your life easier. Okay? Of course, we're gonna always be intermittently feeding the patient with this oxygen. Even if they're not on oxygen, they've done trach suctioning, make sure you give them that support. If they get anxious around this, sometimes you walk in with the tray and they start having a panic attack. So pre-medicating with some medications, this is uh, maybe letting them control when you do it. Would you like to do it after breakfast? Would you like to do it in the afternoon? You seem uncomfortable. Would you like a NEB treatment and then we'll try? What do you think? Let the patient have a little bit of power with this um, because it's a very difficult time for them. Okay, so this is trach suctioning and trach care.